By the end of Battle Angel Alita, it definitely solidified itself as one of my favorite sci-fi action manga that I've ever read, and Alita herself, or Gally as she's known in the Japanese, as pretty much my favorite female protagonist in manga. The final third of the series was a non-stop adrenaline rush filled with twists and turns, and I was on board all the way to its finale. But this was not the end of Alita's story. After a five-year break from 1995 to 2000, Yukita Kishiro, the creator of the manga, would return to his dystopian sci-fi epic and continue it into an entirely new direction with an entirely new series, but at the same time holding on pretty strongly to the heart and spirit of the original but with one gigantic asterisk beside it. Now, from what I'm seeing online, and correct me if I'm wrong if you know because I'm not 100% sure of the details, but it seems like people are saying that while finishing up the original series, the author's health was not doing well, so he rushed its ending. So with Alita Last Order, he actually retcons the entire last chapter of Battle Angel Alita, as in, it didn't happen at all. It's not canon. Just ignore it. Instead, this manga picks up after Alita was caught in a bombing towards the very end of Battle Angel, and in this version, she's put back together by Nova's technology, also revealing that Nova has a bunch of crazy nanotech that whenever he's killed, it just creates a new body for him and then implants all of his memories into it into one of the data chips. So basically he's immortal. And I don't mean technically you can kill him, but it kind of makes killing him pointless. I only wish that I had known about the retcon going into Last Order, where it's kind of explained, but I would have liked an explicit page, maybe for dummies, just saying, hey, just so you know, the last chapter of Battle Angel is no longer canon, but it is what it is. Now, we jump into Last Order dealing with one of the huge twists that was in the original manga, and this would be a spoiler for that, so it's kind of impossible to talk about Last Order without spoiling Battle Angel, to some degree at least, so you've been warned you're going to get some Battle Angel spoilers here. But one of the biggest revelations in the first manga is that everybody living above the scrapyard in Teferis, I think that's how you pronounce it, they all had their brains replaced with a microchip. So it leaves the questions of what it actually means to be human. They are now essentially being controlled by a computer that believes it's them, but does that mean they are even still human in any way? Do they still have a soul if souls exist at all? Does the soul reside in your brain, in your body, or somewhere else? Is it abstract? Is it real? Is it not real? A lot of these deep philosophical questions are being asked here, and it also begins Alita's new quest, a new objective for her, and that all deals with where exactly do the human brains go after they're replaced? Well, apparently they still exist in some giant storage facility that's up in space. Yeah, so Last Order basically is Alita in Space, the series. She leaves Earth, and it creates a lot of new dynamics to play with, introducing a bunch of new characters. I think most notably alongside her is the character of Sex. Now, his name sounds like Sex, but it's actually supposed to be, I think, the word Six, but like a, in a different language. But every time I read it, it's spelled S E. C-H-S. So it just sex. I, I don't know. Also ironic since he kind of changes his sex from female to male. Well, not really because he's not really anything because he's an android cyborg. But uh, anyways, he's a battle cyborg that's modeled after Alita, but winds up with a male body. That's basically what I'm saying. And he is a huge level of energy as a character, and he begins as sort of a rival to Alita, but eventually winds up fighting alongside her. He's your brash, ballsy, and sometimes overzealous character that does a lot of the fighting in the series. A lot of me feels like he was added for that also because Alita, even though she still fights a good deal, she is oftentimes off doing something else or having moments of huge existential dread and complex decision making that will affect the outcome of every colony in space that some Sometimes we just need to cut back to sex either kicking somebody's ass or having his ass kicked. Now, Nova is still a very prominent figure in Last Order, but he takes a little bit of a backseat as the antagonist. Instead, that role is filled by this guy, Mabadi. I actually don't have any idea how to pronounce his name, but this guy has an extremely intimidating presence, and he worked really, really well for me as the antagonist. He's basically the one in charge of everything that goes on up within these colonies, incredibly intelligent with multiple brain chips, and also the ability to hack into 
almost anything technological, which includes cyborg bodies and Alita herself. It's not even that we see him throw down or fight that much, but it's his sheer presence and just how much he's respected by the people and how much people obey him. It's like that you know this guy doesn't take any shit and he proves it right away when we first meet him. His introductory scene is done fantastically. But now a huge majority of this manga actually revolves around a tournament called the Zot Tournament, which serves several purposes. For us as the reader, it's how we get into the bulk of the action sequences of the manga, pitting teams of warriors up against one another, and it showcases so many different types of cybernetic creatures, monsters, the, with the strangest, and I mean strangest abilities and attacks. I, there's a robot that shoots an energy beam out of his robot dick. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say about this. They're not all this silly and over the top, but this moment is something I will probably never forget. But the outside purpose of the tournament is whoever wins gets to become their own independent nation. So they're fighting for their freedom in a sense. Everybody is fighting with the hope that they get to free their people from this ruling class, but it's also kind of rigged. It's a way for the high elites to draw out potential threats that could overthrow them and just eliminate them within the tournament. Having a team in the tournament so powerful, there's no way anybody could actually win. So most of these people are all fighting and dying for nothing. Well, nothing but the entertainment of others and a distraction from the true hardships of the universe. This tournament actually lasts for most of the manga's run. It is huge, but it consistently shifts from the fights there to Alita's story searching for her friend's brain and eventually everything that Alita and her crew become involved with leading them to the tournament as well. And if that's not enough, we got vampires. <laughs> yeah, motherfucking vampires are a thing in this universe as well. But I think it's able to do something really unique with it. Vilma is the main vampire character that we meet who is fighting against Alita inside this tournament. But as we get into her backstory, it takes us way back in time to Earth as everything was beginning to fall apart within humanity. She's in a relationship with another vampire named Victor who is also a really badass character. And the cool thing about this segment is that this story is able to flash forward every so often. So we're jumping ahead like 50 years years at a time, Vilma obviously staying the same age because she's a vampire, but each time it flashes forward, we see more and more of the world changing. Instead of outright explaining it to the audience how we got to where we are, we see it in bits and pieces from Vilma's perspective, alongside her battling with trust when it comes to the human beings and how that fear and paranoia of humanity can destroy a lot of meaningful connections. It's a really good segment, although it does feel extremely detached from everything Alita has done thus far, but on its own, it's it's really good, and it was probably one of the highlights for me. Now, a lot of other stuff goes on with Alita here too that I don't want to spoil much of, but you would think that the simple premise of her getting her friend's brain back, we would have a high-style concept here, and it sort of is, but it's also filled with a lot of sidetracks, occasional gigantic exposition dumps, and then cutting back to more and more and more fighting at the tournament. And that kind of gets repeated multiple times to the point where the potential of going into space and all that could offer... Well, after the first few volumes, when things start getting solidified and into this repetition, I feel like a lot of the mystery and wonder kind of goes away. Now, there's great moments where Alita begins to rediscover memories of her past self, who she was before even arriving in the scrapyards at the very, very beginning of the manga, of the first manga. Uh, in fact, we even get to see all of the events that lead her to that moment, which was really cool. A bit of who she was before all of this, and how it's executed, I think, is done very, very well. It's just that it's such a small portion of this manga compared to everything else around. Alita also goes through several changes, both physically with new body upgrades, but also with kind of a spiritual component to it. It circles back to the concept of what is the soul and what makes somebody human, and Alita is really forced to make some hard choices despite all of her advancements and power upgrades that she gets and thankfully she is able to retain a lot of her true personality throughout she continues to have her curiosity her willpower her compassion for other people but she's a lot more serious at times when she needs to throw down which is great and she kicks some serious ass and she gets like ridiculously powerful in this series which might be another reason why she's often distracted with other plot elements while sex does a lot of the fighting because most 
of the opponents towards the second half of Last Order, Alita just transcends them completely. She is insanely powerful here. One major team in the Zot tournament against them is this team of, how do I say this? Um, karate robots? Yeah, uh, they are presented completely seriously and they stuck around for a very long time. I get the feeling that the author really was inspired by the martial arts philosophy with it, finding your zen, only committing violence in self-defense, finding your sense of self. There's a lot of eastern ideas within this manga mostly coming from these characters, which is fine because it's all philosophies that I enjoy and that I'm relatively familiar with, but it did get a little heavy-handed at times. The only member of the team who wasn't like the others was a really powerful character named Zekka, and he totally reminded me of the character Lobo from DC Comics, if you've ever read any of those, uh, both in design and in personality. He's just a dude that's really self-confident and a total dick and absolutely proud of it. I think my biggest gripes with this manga come from the final segments. Uh, if you've ever heard the term Day Ex Machina before, this manga has a huge one. It's a term in storytelling that basically means when there's a huge unsolvable problem that gets quickly resolved by some outside force, like something you couldn't predict at all swoops in and just fixes everything. During the finale of the tournament, that happens big time. And you have had this giant nearly constant fighting happening over 80% of this manga, and then Everything just wraps up within a few chapters. I don't want to spoil it, but it honestly was kind of a big letdown for me. Whereas in the original Battle Angel Alita manga, I thought the ramp up and execution of the finale worked well, and yet behind the scenes, it was actually rushed and ended prematurely by the author. But here, the way the author actually intended it to be, to me reading it, felt like the ending was very rushed and abrupt. And I don't mean the actual ending of the manga, I mean the ending of the Zot tournament. And Mabadi's final moments, eh, I'm not saying it was horrible or anything, but man, I was really, really underwhelmed by the ending. But the actual ending of Last Order is kind of like an epilogue story. It goes back to Earth and focuses on characters not seen since the original manga, mostly Figure and Ido. Figure being a man that fell in love with Alita and is waiting for her to return, and Ido, who of course erased his memories and forgot about Alita. I actually really like how the two characters come to know each other and they have their own final confrontation with Nova on Earth, and I hear, I think that everything worked really well, them meeting felt earned, and how they dealt with Nova was also done excellently. And Ido slowly uncovering the mysteries of his past was drawn out just long enough to make it believable and also satisfying when it concluded. I really like this part of the manga a lot, actually, and it really feels like a side story since it's so disconnected from the rest of Last Order, but it pays off if you've read everything from the very beginning of the first manga. So unlike the original manga that gave a definitive ending that was retcon, this ending of Last Order is absolutely a cliffhanger. We're able to give some resolution to the supporting characters, and they are left well enough knowing that they will probably be alright and could potentially have a happily ever after. But as far as Alita herself, she is definitely heading into another adventure that is left wide open. And that leads, of course, into the next Alita manga, which is called Alita the Mars Chronicles, which began in 2014 and is still ongoing to this day. Well, maybe when I can catch up, I'll start reviewing the new chapters, but I haven't gotten to that series yet. After I finished Battle Angel, I was very happy that the Alita audience and fandom was so accepting and inviting in the comments. It was filled with positivity, and just on the internet, you know, sometimes you can never tell which fan bases are going to be chill and which are going to be toxic, especially if you don't love every single little aspect of the series. You know, if you have any criticism, sometimes people just immediately immediately start attacking. But the Battle Angel Alita crew, I truly think that it was one of the most chill responses to a new manga I've ever gotten. So you guys are awesome, and I just wanted to say thank you. But also a lot of people in those comments told me that Last Order was even better than Battle Angel, and after reading it, well, I'll say this. I think the artwork has vastly improved. I think a lot of the imagery and double-page spreads far exceed Battle Angel, especially the early portions of the manga. Some of the uh, artwork in this manga are so, so, so good. The action sequences also have much better choreography. There's a lot more of them. Also, they're a lot more intricate and expressive and have a lot more variety with its characters. But as far as the story is concerned, I actually liked Battle Angel a lot more. I think that here, I just didn't enjoy the side characters quite as much, and the tournament 
I, I thought it was cool. I enjoyed it. There was a lot of highlights. There was a lot of peak moments, but I felt like it went on a little bit too long. And because of the ending of it, it just kind of left me feeling a little high and dry. I have a lot of moments in Last Order that I liked a lot, especially with Alita's backstory. There's a lot of really cool individual scenes that I love. But from start to finish as a complete manga, it didn't hit as hard as Battle Angel, in my opinion. But even so, I am still a huge fan of this series and, of course, of Alita as a character. So I definitely want to see what's going to happen next. So I guess uh, I guess I'm heading to Mars. I don't know. I guess I'll read that pretty soon and tell you guys what I think. But if you've read Last Order, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. What was your favorite scene, favorite fight, favorite Alita moments? Anything you want to add about Last Order, put down below. Also, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for joining me for these reviews. Uh, give the video a like if you enjoyed it to help it with the algorithm. Also, if you want to support the channel on a deeper level, I have channel memberships, Patreon, merch store, all that linked down below alongside all of my various social media links where you can follow me. Other than that, guys, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.